Happy Monday, all you Minties! This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1 reprint from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started! Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on January 4th. However, some of my viewers overseas have already gotten their copies. I think it's happening with Epic Collections too, but I play it safe and just make sure that those are the exact street dates that the distribution centers have. It's January 4th of 2022, and like I mentioned, some of y'all got an early Christmas present. But here is Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. This is the latest printing that you all helped make happen. What we're looking at here is one of the direct market covers. And let's turn it this way so we can look at the spine and compare it to the spine of the other two options. So you have one standard edition and one other direct market cover. And then, of course, this one here. I chose the Venom cover because Astonishing Melanie loves Venom. That's why I decided to go with this one. But all of them do have that black spine. All of them do have the exact same font for Ultimate Spider-Man. And then, yes, they all do have a different picture on the spine, but Volume 1. So let's go back to this cover. The cover is provided by Mark Bagley. It's got those colors that remind me of the Marvel Flare cards. I remember the first time looking at those Flare cards, and there was an advertisement where it said Drool here. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers that. I think it was a picture of Venom, actually. Mark Bagley's Venom. And it was just these computer-generated, almost like airbrush colors. And that's what most of the covers for Ultimate Spider-Man had at the very beginning. Um, but yes, this one is drawn by Mark Bagley. And here is the spine of the book. I believe that is Joe Quesada on the spine right there. Bendis and Bagley, Volume 1. Volume 2 coming out in 2022. You all made that happen. You pre-ordered enough copies of this to make sure that that was a guaranteed sell. So, way to go. Now, we just got to buy up Volume 2. Uh, here are the covers. And they're all... I hate this term, but they're all virgin covers. They don't have any uh, words on them or any numbers on them. Uh, the price of the book is $125. And collecting... Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 39, as well as the half issue. And you have a couple blurbs here from Pop Mat Matters and IGN. I almost said Pop Mattress. Under the Dust Jacket. Love seeing that. That is from Ultimate Spider-Man number one. That is the cover to number one right there. The spine with a different image of Spidey there. And then the variant cover, so in case you missed it. And all these covers are included in this omnibus. Now, normally I do a comparison to an omnibus, but I only had the Barnes & Noble exclusive omnibus, which was a pre-Marvel omnibus, and the Astonishing Melanie used that in her classroom because I decided to go for the oversized hardcovers instead because I figured they weren't going to make any more omnis, at least Barnes & Noble exclusive omnis. So I will be doing a comparison to the art of the OHC. So keep in mind, I don't have... The even the second printing of the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus to compare it to. So let's crack this book open, talk about the premise, all the stories in here without going into spoilers, and of course the importance of this particular Omnibus. All right, let's go ahead and get this book open. We have some red and paper there. Ultimate Spider-Man with this image of a really skinny Peter Parker. And we have this image over here. This is one of the covers, like I said, because they use different colors, those... Almost like those pastel computer-generated colors. I'm sure there's some term for that that I'm butchering here. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis, of course, uh, writing all of this. Mark Bagley, inks by R. T. Burt, uh, Dan Pinotian, and Eric Benson and Rodney Ramos. Then you have the colors of Steve Buscellato and Mary Javins, as well as Color Graphics and Transparency Digital. Richard Starking supplying most of the letters here in the book. And then you have others join him later on. But kicking it off with Ultimate Spider-Man number one. So, uh, before I talk about the premise of this, I did want to talk about a little bit what I mentioned earlier when I said Barnes & Noble pre-omnibus. So, years ago, Marvel released a big, thick omnibus. It's pretty much the three oversized hardcovers put together, which is exactly what you'll find in this. And they sold it exclusively through Barnes & Noble. Now, rumor has it that that was just to test the waters to see how well these big books sold. Um, 
And I guess it didn't sell too well back then because they only made one volume. It was discontinued. And that's what I mean by Barnes & Noble. It had a different kind of spine. Uh, my wife had it for years. I mean, it lasted 10 years. That's how good these books are. And keep in mind, that was in the hands of kids. So they weren't treating it, you know, they were treating it like a library book. And the book lasted 10 years in her classroom. Um, but years later, they decided when the Marvel Omnibus line was going, and it was going strong, and books were selling more, to try it again. To try to bring the ultimate... Spider-Man comic into a proper omnibus like the ones we see with the spine nowadays and It didn't sell that well And I have a theory about that right like my theory is always like well It was still too new to people that had read it when they were kids, you know, they were in college But now years later those kid, those people that read it as kids graduated college got jobs and you know, had extra funds and wanted to spend it on things that they remember. And nostalgia has a price. I mean, look at all of us that grew up in the 80s. How much we spend on reimagining of all these different cartoons we grew up with, whether they're toys or comics or even new cartoon versions of the stuff that we grew up with. Nostalgia has a price. So my theory was, okay, well, now those kids are older. They, like I mentioned, they have, they're making extra money. Maybe now's the time to reprint it. So that's kind of the story of how all this happened uh, when talking about reprinting Ultimate Spider-Man. Because I'm sure a lot of people are like, well, it's a sure bet it's going to sell. But you got to keep in mind, back then they tried twice to sell this and it didn't sell. So it was almost a gamble for Marvel to try to do it a third time. It took a crazy guy that does videos in his basement to kind of help them communicate with the fan base that it would sell and holy crap when i announced this i can't i can't imagine another video outside of like uncanny x-men when i announced volume four and things like that that people were just so hyped up for it was insane i i think i got the most likes out of an announcement video within the first day that day and sure enough the pre-sales were good and here we are with volume one and a volume two coming out next year so that's pretty much the story of the whole omnibus thing why you know some people have asked me like why did they take so long to reprint them this is gonna sell come on it's a sure thing uh, it wasn't really a sure thing but it is now okay so the premise of this what is the ultimate universe in case you're wondering uh in case you're not familiar with spider-man or you know you've just been reading the 616 universe which is the main canon universe well, the Ultimate Universe was a... Actually, it was a little project. It was an experiment that Bill Jamas, the president of Marvel at the time, uh, Joe Quesada, they tried to do... And I remember they tried something similar with Spider-Man Chapter 1. So they thought, okay, we have 40 years of Spider-Man. A lot of his history is convoluted. A lot of his stories are just outdated. How about we try to update some of it and modernize the story and like i said there was some pushback because they tried with chapter one so they got this guy uh named brian michael bendis who was at the time more of an indie writer he had done a bunch of independent stuff um and they gave him pretty much free reigns almost to do whatever he wanted to with ultimate spider-man and he took the 11 page origin story of peter parker becoming spider-man and turned it into seven issues of an origin story. And that pretty much tells you exactly how this went down. Uh, the idea, of course, of the original Silver Age Spider-Man was to tell... Uh, <laughs> we thought that was such a ridiculous picture by Mark Bagley. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, is to tell, you know, like self-contained single issues. But the way that writers were writing during this time were six-issue story arcs that were almost like writing for trade is what we called it like six issues would make a nice trade paperback collection and it was perfect it was it was crazy that they got mark bagley probably the most recognizable spider-man artist uh during the 90s and of course in the aughts to come back and draw spider-man re-envisioning him because you know, most artists probably got tired of drawing the same character over and over again most of them want to move on but he's just so damn good at it that they asked him to do it, and he did. And he stuck around for 111 issues, breaking 
the record of what was it? I think it was uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby on Fantastic Four, like artist and writer on the same book. They broke that record. So they reimagined the character of Peter Parker. Like the entire origin is here. Uh, it's a little bit different, of course, getting bitten by a radioactive spider, the whole with great power comes great responsibility speech, Uncle Ben is a hipster, he's got a ponytail, so he looks a little bit different, but everything that you're used to happening in Peter Parker's life happens in this with a twist. All his uh, supporting cast are in here, you have Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane, uh, you have Harry Osborn. You also have his nemesis that show up in here. Now, each one with a pretty interesting twist. And there are some bigger twists and differences more than others. Some of them, you're like, okay, this is exactly like the 616 character. Whereas some villains are completely different. There are some new villains, and this is the also the Ultimate Universe. is the universe that introduced us to the Samuel L. Jackson version of Nick Fury. If not for the Ultimate Universe, say what you will about it, we wouldn't have Samuel L. Jackson playing Nick Fury in the movies. No way in hell would that happen. Um, because I, I think it was Mark Miller. Not the biggest Mark Miller fan, but I guess I've got to thank him for that. So yes, the Ultimate Universe eventually became its own universe. So out of Ultimate Spider-Man spun Ultimate Team-Up, the Ultimate, Ultimate Fantastic Four, and it just became its own universe like the 616 universe just a different take on these characters and more of a modern twist because they are using cell phones they're using computers they're using technology to get around more and everything is modernized so all of this of course drawn by the phenomenal mark bagley let's get to the venom issues because that's all the way back here here we go so we even have a new take on venom it's different than the eddie brock version of venom but i dig it. it it's an interesting take on him and of course the story continues into volume two you have a thousand pages of omnibus material in this now let's look at the extras in the back here so you have a variant by joe quesada another variant by joe quesada and then the origins of all of the ultimate universe here uh, from brian michael bendis from bill jamas and the sketchbook. And even though this is a reimagining of the 616 universe, I'm going to skip things that may spoil some of the story here. But we do have new characters, too. This is also the universe where his friend, uh, Ned Leeds, in the Spider-Man MCU universe, like, the version of him is based on uh, the character that's created in these pages here. So lots of interviews... There's the Kingpin, some, yeah, then we have some artwork here for some of the reimagining of these villains, like Electro, the Shocker, Fancy Dan in Montana. So characters that you may have seen in the original 616 universe, but they are just have a small twist to them. The Green Goblin designs, and even, like, the origin of, like, the webbing, or the Green Goblin, is it a guy in a suit? It's a lot different in this. Pencils by Mark Bagley. And I love the way that Mark Bagley draws him because he makes him look like a kid. He really does look like a teenager that's still in high school. And that's the thing about this universe too. Here, let's go back and look at some of the pictures in here. Is that he is still in high school through all of this omnibus. He doesn't grow up as quickly. Um, and I think that was the idea. Like, Bendis wanted to keep him really young uh, for a long time. Didn't want him to graduate and go to college. So there's a lot of high school drama in here too. And let's talk about the binding. So this particular omnibus is printed at the Donnelly printer. Uh, has a thousand pages. This is what your eye looks like. And this is after I've opened it once. And I, I, really, I've just uh, laid it open one time and properly did the omnibus opening to it. Um, and actually, here we go. This is what the spread pages look like in the middle of the book. But let's find something at the beginning. Towards the beginning, rather. So here we have something towards the very beginning in issue number one. I love this. Based on the original story in Amazing Fantasy number 15 by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Very cool. Seven issues based on 11 pages origin. Different times, man. Different storytelling um, ways. Okay, let's uh, look at the back here. All right, here we have one from the story with Venom. 
So as you can see, there's very little, if any, gutter loss in these pages here. And let's do a comparison really quick to Ultimate Spider-Man Oversized Hardcover. Just looking at the artwork. Basically what I'm trying to do here is just show the reproduction of the art and just looking at the differences between the oversized hardcover and this new edition here of the Omnibus. And the colors stand out a little bit more here on the new printing of the Omni. But keep in mind, this book is a little bit older too. They didn't even keep the covers. Like, they just literally start with the story in this. This, you actually get the covers. Okay, so now on the left-hand side, this is the new printing of the Omnibus. And on the right is the OHC. And... In the new printing of the Omnibus, you get the covers, you get the issue number. In this, sometimes you get, like, a page that breaks the story up. I don't know why they didn't use the actual covers, though. I always wondered that. And that's only for the first, I think it's the first two or three oversized hardcovers. But in this, you get everything. And I want to, again, point out that the colors look a lot more vibrant in this new edition than this well-read uh, oversized hardcover. The only differences other than that is the paper quality. This is, of course, the oversized hardcover. The paper they don't ever use anymore is this really thick, glossy paper. Whereas this has um, thinner paper. I mean, I'm not saying it's thin. It's what typical Donley paper feels like uh, the last few years here. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book when it comes out, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking it up, if you're excited for the volume two, if this is your first time reading it, if you've read it before, if you've had it in single issues, trade paperbacks, oversized hardcovers, Ultimate Editions, whatever edition that was available, let me know if you've owned it and you're upgrading to this Omnibus. Or if you already have this Omnibus. And I know some y'all crazy that you're going to buy this again because of a different cover. But I'm not here to judge. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. If you have any more questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. Ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel, if you can do so. And thank you to our existing patrons. Could not be making videos like this possible without you all. And more importantly, all of you stay healthy, stay safe out there. Much love.